Meanwhile, have you been following the Trayvon Martin case? I have a feeling everyone is. An accused shooter, George Zimmerman, has made bail now for the second time, a million dollars bail by posting a $100,000 bond. But something else happened. New medical records were released that reveal more about his injuries the night Trayvon Martin was shot. A physician's assistant detailing how it was believed Zimmerman did not suffer head trauma, as he claims when he spoke to the police, and only sought medical attention because he needed a doctor's note for his job. What kind of impact does all this new evidence have on George Zimmerman's case saying he was defending himself? Here now is Vicki Siegler, self, uh, civil attorney, rather, an adjunct professor at Fordham Law. Professor, good to see you. <laughs> and Joey Jackson, former prosecutor, criminal defense attorney. He does it all. How Great are you, to see Jamie? both of you. Thank you. Um, Joey, let me start with you and ask you what these medical records tell us about the case. I believe there's a new twist. You know, there can always be a twist, and this could be spun how many different ways, right? That's what lawyers do, we spin. But any type of evidence of injury, I think, is significant. And it's significant because the defense can now argue, right, with clarity that, listen, my client here, Mr. Zimmerman, was in eminent fear for his life. And that is evidenced by what? black eyes, a broken nose, gashes to the head. In terms of the whole head trauma, that's more of a medical term. If somebody is, has gashes in the head, we can logically conclude that they felt some trauma. Whether it rises to the definition of medical trauma is another story. So I think the defense will spin it in suggesting that this is why he acted in the way that he did, in the fatal way, because he thought he was going to die. The prosecution, of course, will spin it quite differently, as we know. Yeah, I'm going to spin it right now, Vicky, and tell me if I'm right or uh -huh. wrong. We see the bandages on the back of his head, and we heard him in that video that was released by the defense saying that my head was bashed against concrete so many times I thought I was going to die, claiming Trayvon had actually uh, instituted that and done that. Now you hear the physician's assistant saying we didn't need a CAT scan, we didn't need this, we didn't need that. Oh, and he, he came the next day to a medical clinic after refusing some treatment to get a note for his boss. Right. Has he strengthened or weakened his case with these medical records? Well, if you're the prosecution, of course, you're going to be hammering down on the fact that he has no credibility whatsoever. So he's made up these serious injuries whereby he really didn't have such strong injuries that he would be in imminent fear of bodily injury, which justified his self-defense argument of killing Trayvon Martin. That's what the prosecution is going to argue. So I think it's going to be a medical, uh, the medical experts are going to be battling because obviously George Zimmerman was stating what he thought he felt and what actually Trayvon Martin did. But really, is that accurate? or not. So that's really going to happen. I think the medical challenges that are, are, are arising really are supporting basically the defense's claim that he was in bodily fear, that he was harmed. However, because he didn't get additional treatment after the next day when this event happened, that could hurt him. So I guess there's both arguments on both sides. You know, it's interesting that you bring that up about where he sought treatment, when he sought treatment, and what treatment was recommended. That's somebody's subjective decision. Mm -hmm. sure. But let me throw this at you, Joey. It seems to me that if he's claiming he had these massive injuries and doctors didn't agree, and there'll be testimony on both sides, he may have to take the stand here and actually explain himself. Uh, you know what, Jamie? He almost has to do that. In a normal course of events, we talk all the time, should a defendant testify? If they do, what does it do to the case? Does it strengthen? Does it weaken? But remember, in this case, essentially, there are two witnesses. We know that there are other witnesses who are going to say from afar what they saw, but he's going to have to explain why he felt it necessary and appropriate appropriate to use deadly physical force. And so I do believe, Jamie, whether it's the immunity hearing that he seeks before the actual trial, because we know, right, he can hit a grand slam in the immunity hearing and the prosecution is dropped. But at trial itself, he not only has to explain, of course, his medical condition, but he has to explain why he took the actions sure. he did. Sure, his state of mind. Vicki, this is what fascinates mm -hmm. me about this case completely. And I, I'm a lawyer, and mm -hmm. one of the places I'm a lawyer is Florida. The stand your ground law that allows this judge mm -hmm. to actually hear this case before it ever gets to a jury. And tell everyone, what decision does the judge get to make? The judge actually gets to make in this matter whether or not this case even moves forward on the civil side and the criminal side. So if there is immunity hearing, which we believe there ultimately will be, um, we wouldn't. there's no reason why there wouldn't be, this judge could ultimately throw out this case where George Zimmerman would not be prosecuted by a jury. That is huge. It really, um, is. really we, we, you know, we're shocked here in New York because, you know, we're not used to that. So I think, you know, if Judge Lester has... 
uh, a great deal uh, um, of power in this case, and the world is watching. So for us, the Stand Your Law ground, we are hoping that it's not vigilantism. It's really about whether or not George Zimmerman had the right to use self-defense, and this judge may be making this ultimate deci decision on his behalf, not the jury. Joey, let me bring up this point last. Kelly and I were talking sure. about this during the break before we came to you guys. This judge is not very happy <laughs> with, with uh, the defendant, Zimmerman, and his wife even, mm -hmm. who have lied under oath. It's to in court to yes. this judge. You know what? It's amazing, Jamie. And you know, it really if you read the decision, he is he really excoriated. I mean, he was just so upset. He talked about how he manipulated the system, how he flaunted the system. And here's why this is so significant. Because this judge has essentially already said that Mr. Zimmerman has zero credibility. Guess who would be testifying? And you know, before that judge, when the judge makes a decision as to immunity, Mr. Zimmerman. And if the mm -hmm. judge has already stated that the credibility is lost, then the attorney has a decision to make. Does he even have the immunity hearing knowing how the judge feels about his client? And if he does have it, does it telegraph all the evidence he has that is the defense evidence so that the prosecution at trial, mm -hmm. once he's denied, just crushes him? And that's Joey, a big decision. Joey, you are so right. I mean, that <laughs> yeah. really, the legal team is going to be thinking long and hard about this and what their next move is going to be. I'm not on that legal team, but I, <laughs> I would be so curious if this prosecutor has offered a plea deal mm -hmm. and whether or not the attorney has recommended Zimmerman take it. We're going to follow this one. You guys are great. Thank Thanks. you so much. Appreciate it, Jamie. Take okay. care, Vicki. You too.